podcast like this. Who gon' bring it to the table? Boss talk. Who your girlfriend favorite? Boss talk. We gon' do it how you want it. Boss talk. Yeah, everybody on. Check it, check it, check it. This is a unique host. It's your boy ECO, and I'm here with the lovely, amazing, official, outstanding. Mr. Baker, what's going on? <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 my all go on. I want y'all to stop what you're doing right now. Go like, subscribe, follow us on all social media platforms. I mean, our Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, Snapchat, we're on all of it. Just Google us, Boss Talk Podcast 101. We will pop up, guarantee you. But if you want to see all our visuals, you got to go over to our YouTube channel. There you can go ahead and hit that subscribe notifications do all of the good stuff because y'all love what we put down every single day but if you want us to get exclusive content now that's where you're going to have to go into the description section below right here and there's a link that says join our membership click that link and it take you through all the process go ahead and su support the brand because we're going to keep doing this content every day because y'all see us on the street and be like man i love what y'all doing keep it up this is how we can keep it up this is how you can support us join our membership Thank you in advance and stay blessed. Yo, man, this girl right here that don't really need no introduction. Uh, one of the finest girls on the internet. Heard that. And I ain't gonna lie to you. I, was, I looked up. I was really kind of like, man, I, should I be looking at this? This is beautiful. And then I said, you know what? But my wife told me to research her. So I didn't feel so bad, man. <laughs> This this lady will help you with your workout. She's she's definitely got something going that's different and unique, and that's what put on Boss Talk One Hundred and One. Man, Kayla G is in the building. Say, <laughs> <laughs> so, hey, man. So, hey, thank you for coming on the show. Thanks for having me. Um, you know you you got a lot going on. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna pass it. I always pass it over to Miss Jamaica anyway. Ladies but first. today I feel good about it. Okay. You and I be like, I don't want to let her take it over. Oh. But today is your day. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so you were born and raised in Houston? Yes, ma'am. What part? I'm from the north side from Agus Hall. Okay. Yeah. So what was it like growing up there? And I know that you were raised with your mom. Yeah. Not your dad. Um, my dad was very active. He just was military. It was military. So he was just gone a lot. Okay. But he's very active. How did, how was it growing up being a military brat, so to say? Yeah. Um, I wouldn't necessarily, I was so much of a military brat. Mm -hmm. My more so upbringing, like, I guess the interesting part is just, I grew up and went to school hood, like straight in the hood, mm -hmm. ghetto ass school, like nothing but black and Hispanics. And then I go home to a white mama every day. <laughs> so it's like... So stuff was just a little different. Like my mama ain't no Karen White. I was about to ask you. But she's still white. So it's just like some things. It's like okay, I see my friends. You know, live like this, and then right. I go home. and I'm like, what was the well, difference? I'm gonna get my hair done. She's like, for what? You have to go go put some water on. So did, you, did your mom have the bob, or did she really have? Well, you know, cause white That's girls, saying, white you know, the bob. <laughs> you know when they date black dudes, cause they got the bob. Nah, she ain't had a bob. Damn. She ain't had <laughs> Let's go. No, but okay. So, how come she didn't go traveling with your dad? Because uh, I know, because I know military, you know, families they don't make married. They were separated. They, they were they separated. Was, yeah, they separated. But he was still active. He's still active. But I have a stepdaddy too that's been around. So okay, okay. Yeah. But how did you feel with him being gone? Was did you feel like there was something? Although he was active, he was mm -hmm. still gone though. Mm -hmm. Did you feel like being a girl? Was there anything missing? I don't personally feel like there's anything missing because I did still have a father figure at home. My mm -hmm. stepdad, he's still there. He's still around. Okay. And my dad still, he came home a lot and we talked all the time. But my dad was super, super, super strict. So I used to be You like, didn't want it. <laughs> 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 and I always spent time with his side of the family. So I would still always be around mm -hmm. my dad's side all the time. So okay. I don't feel like I miss much. No, because I always feel like the person you are today mm -hmm. starts off from the molded young ages because mm -hmm. people go through whether relationship problems or mm -hmm. financial problems or whatever and they'll be mm -hmm. like why I keep going through these issues not realizing okay well I saw my mama do this or saw my daddy, my uh, daddy do this or, you understand what mm -hmm. I mean that's why I like to go back into the past and be like okay how were you raised what was your mental thinking like what was your parents thinking like mm -hmm. you know so tell me something that your mom instilled in you at a young age growing up as a young girl um with my mom, it's just like, I was just always this perfect image for her. So it's like, mm. I think I just have that so bad in my head. Like, I just always have to. You couldn't do no wrong. Mm -mm. Did you do wrong? No. 
So you I've never had a whooping in my life. So you was always That's one of what those. It is. That's what it is. I knew it was something from the time you walked through this door. I grabbed my belt. I said, boy, I sure wish. Boy, you don't even know how I wanted to get Because I knew. You could tell it was on her that she had not been whooped before. How could you tell? You and you know, tell. God, the word of God says you don't spare the rod. You will spoil that don't child. Bring him and I'm going to tell you right now, I would not have this. God not know that I would not spoil this child. <laughs> She didn't want to disappoint her mom, so she didn't do nothing bad. Well, exactly. I don't know about this. She need, you could at least pinch her. You got to pinch her. <laughs> you got kids. How yes. Many, how many? Four, and they get pinched all the time. I believe it. No, I don't think I, I didn't do it good. I should have wore their butt out. They, you never pinched. I was the pincher. Yeah, you wasn't the pincher. Yeah, yeah, I didn't do nothing. I'm weak. My you daddy just, was hard on me. I let these niggas make it. And I'm going to tell you something. It's going it's gonna to hurt in the end. I know what you need. You Boy, I, I, I used to hate when that switch come in the house, but I needed it. And I'm telling you right now, it helped motivate me to this day. You had to pick your own switch? Man, my daddy used to cut logs. This nigga could cut a switch better than anybody. <laughs> <laughs> when he go out, he come back with a tree. Do you hear me? Mm -hmm. Next thing you know. I needed it though. But That's every what parent, me, every I'm parent know their child though. Mm -hmm. So some kids might need it. Some kids that might not. Didn't know me like that. My mama could look at me and I cry. So I need it. Really? Wow. Yeah, she was my that daddy person. could too, but he still put them hands on me. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Peter pops, man. But I'm telling you right now, man. I think I I don't think there's nothing wrong. You you seen these kids in the hood? Yeah. They drilling and everything. You don't think they need a whooping? They should have been had ass beat a long time ago. <laughs> I ain't say I'm against it. I said I never had a whooping. Oh, okay. <laughs> I didn't need them. I didn't get trouble. Go ahead, babe. So, okay. So, were you always dancing as a young kid growing up? Actually, no. So, I was, I grew up super, super sheltered and super shy. It sounded that way. Super shy. Um, I started dancing in like, High school, mm -hmm. I got on the dance team, and then... What motivated you to get on the dance team if you were super shy? Just something to do, like, mm -hmm. just something to do. So I okay. wouldn't get in trouble, but I didn't have to sit at home all the time. Like, just something to do. Okay. And then um, what really just brought it out of me, though, because, like, when we was in high school, you know, my little friends would come over, and they close the door and turn on music, and they'd be dancing and stuff. I'd just be sitting on the bed, like, <laughs> watching them. They'd be like, come on, like, mm-mm. But when I went to college, I went to HBCU. Oh, yeah. So I went to Southern University in Baton Rouge. And you went to fraternity, you did a fraternity and, and the sorority No, and all I didn't that. join anything. It was too anything? fake for me. Mm. I don't, it was too fake for you me. You might be all right. <laughs> <laughs> you he just want to wait to the next. I'm trying to figure this out. Keep going. <laughs> so yeah. now I didn't join it. I just was on the dance team and I just did my thing. And that's when it really just. Why so they home. helped, they helped going to an HBCU, that helps bring you out of a shell. Going, it did for me. Like really, going to the HBCU is what created Kayla G. Mm. Because it was never a goal of mine, or like I never was like, oh, I want to be popular. I want to be this or that. It never happened like that. But dancing for an HBCU and then being in Baton Rouge and our director of our dance team, he will always get here. Like we need girls for videos. We need girls for this. We need girls for that. They always go to the it girls on campus and mm -hmm. of course they want dancers or you know girls that got you know right. the physique or can dance or can do this or do that so that's really what started me <laughs> without me even knowing tell me about that first time when you had to go on stage because you know being shy you, I guarantee you you was nervous like crazy uh -huh. tell me about that first time and how you had to build up the guts to even do it and how did you feel afterwards so I used to wear glasses in contact so mm -hmm. when I used to have to perform in front of big um, audiences I wouldn't wear neither one because I felt like if I can't see you you can't see me you might fall off the stage. Oh, I can see close. Okay. I can see far, so it just looked blurry. Okay, so that's like how you built up your courage. Mm -hmm. But now I done got LASIK, so I see every damn thing. <laughs> <laughs> wow. I mean, you was four-eyed and ugly when you were young. I I, I'm just up. saying, man. I mean, don't get mad at me. You, know what I'm you was four-eyed. You were walking around. I seen... Was it I seen you like a six too. But you, you no, had four-eyes sometimes. Nope. I paid for my glasses to look regular. <laughs> <laughs> they were thick. Thick, 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 thick. <laughs> Shout out to my boy Jones. They were thick, wasn't they? Mm -mm. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, but no, it's just, it, you know, to see you, you know, doing what you do, the dancing part. Now, you weren't ever a stripper, was you? No. But you thought about it. Uh huh. Nah, I knew it. I can tell you. I'm out of What made you think about stripping? Because. 
Because was I look good money? as fuck. Was it the and money? I would, hell yeah, I've been yeah. rich. Yeah. But I don't want people being able to money? touch me. That's what? the problem. I don't want people being able to touch me. For the money. For anything. Don't touch me. Okay. But you have some strip clubs that um, no, I hear they got, females. No, they get a no, dollar. I've heard touch. some females say that. Regardless. No, right I, here. in Texas, but there's some strip clubs where the girls they be like, right in. the girls yeah. be like, um, you can't touch me. I don't do lap dance. I don't do any of that sort of stuff. They don't get no money. Nobody don't want to deal with it. I don't believe that. No. Like, that's what they say. Because there's other girls in the back doing everything. So you out here talking about don't touch me. Leave her right where she at. <laughs> <laughs> you feel me? They trying to find, they finessing, trying to stick that money on each other. Yeah, see what I'm trying to tell you? They gonna uh -huh. sleep it in there. Trying to slap that at? No. You, yeah, mm -hmm. and, I, and I don't blame you, but that's that's commendable. Like, that that's an easy way out, you know, a lot of times uh, to go and do it the way they do it sometimes, you know, mm -hmm. for you to figure it out a different way. I got to commend you for that. You mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? Um, so, I see you... Uh, Training with Kevin Gates. That's what popped up to me. Like, okay, okay uh, shout out to Kevin Gates. Dope dude. Mm -hmm. Dope lyrics. How did you and him even link up? Well, like I said, I went to Southern University, so I lived in Baton Rouge. Okay. So I met him out there when he first got out of jail, like, before Kevin the fame? with the dreads. Before the fame or, or during Like, the fame? he was known already, but before he... Yeah, really yeah. took off. Yeah. yeah, and and he knew like, uh, man, it'd be dope to work out with her. Come well, on, I wasn't man. even training in. I what was, was just doing? dancing for the university. I was still in college. Okay, okay. I was okay. still in college, so I've just known him and maintained a relationship with him. Was you in some of the video? Um, no, I wasn't in none of his videos. Okay, what's okay. that? Why are you I saying was, like that? I'm trying to remember. I don't think I was. I was supposed to be in one, but I walked off sick because they pissed me off. Oh, so you gotta. Have you a have a short tolerance. I don't like disrespect, and they was disrespecting the other girls. What like was the, they the doing? The guys on set, the, the you know the negative homeboys on set. Mm. That's like they ain't never seen a woman before, and I ain't like the way they was treating the girls. And nobody stood up or said nothing. So you ain't. I'm leaving. I'm not gonna do it. Wow. Well, mm -hmm. So you you got an attitude because you wasn't willing to stay the course. You didn't know how to maneuver around conversation, so you left. You copped out. No, because them niggas was I big niggas, I and said. I left. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so you didn't, you didn't, you didn't want to play with why me. you didn't just, you, nothing else could be done. Cause a lot of time them just to stand, you know, they just standing by. Most Everybody of was niggas. in there. Everybody was on set. And, and nobody wasn't saying nothing. Exactly. So no, no respect and integrity on this set. Is and you didn't want to put that set. Yeah. And you didn't want to put them in their place. I did, and then I fucking left. Oh, you did it. Next and thing, left. she okay. gonna try to throw some blows. She thinks she hard anyway. She be stretching and shit. So yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, but no. So basically, that was one time though. But how did you guys connect to do the workout and all the stuff that you guys? Have um, you stayed in contact. Yeah, we stayed in contact. I was in LA, and um, we had linked up, and I, we did the session and whatnot. And then after that, I opened up for one of his shows in Houston on his last tour. Okay, and that's what? Because I rap too. I know. So, I was going to get to that if okay. you let me do my damn interview. Well, we're talking about Kevin Gates, so. <laughs> go ahead. <laughs> she better walk off the set, y'all. I knew this nigga wasn't going to stay long. <laughs> um, but yeah, I was in L.A., and I just like hit him like, you know. That's all. Mm -hmm. So, and, and basically, you know, how did you, you know, because, you know, he got to pay out. You know, he got that bread. So, you know, you know okay, I'm going to do the workout thing with you. But, you know, here's my here's my fee right there. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? How did you break the business down to him? Like, I want to work. He wanted to do the stretching. And mm -hmm. he, is it something that he wanted to implement in his health program? Well, yeah, he works out a lot already. Of and course. he stretches. He's super flexible already. And he does all the meditation and this mm -hmm. and that. So it's already in his lifestyle. Like I said, I've just known him for over 10 years. So. It was just kind of like, oh, I'm in L.A., you don't want to go work out, like go to the gym type shit. Wow. And yeah. and it's more also for promoting and mm -hmm. everything, what you do mm -hmm. as well. I mm -hmm. get it, man. And Ain't my that dope for him to, to, yeah. really, to rock out with you like that? Because he got a big platform as Huge. well. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, I think, how did how did that affect your 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 whole, you know, social media uh, presence? Um, It did well. Like, I feel like half of the social media was like, Oh, we know why he's there. We know this. We know that. Like all that type of shit. And then I had the people defending me. Like he been knowing her. They been cool. They been you mm -hmm. know following each other. They been X Y Z. So it's just funny to watch people argue in the comments. <laughs> but you, it brings that doesn't the, affect you. I mm -mm, I got over all that in college. I learned how to. So you Turn don't agree or you do agree with Say Cheese? Sean Cotton came on here and he said that the comments is the devil. 
He they, says, he say, if you read them, sometimes they say good stuff. It motivates you, mm -hmm. but then that'll make you not work as hard. Mm -hmm. And then he says, sometimes you get on there and they treat you like crap. Mm -hmm. And then that make you feel some type of way. Mm -hmm. And he just, he rolled it up in a bow for me and said, it's the devil. It is. <laughs> it is. He, he said he ain't read it in five years. He ain't reading them coming. I read them, but like she was just asking me, how do I deal with it? In college, I learned because... Some of my, I guess, fan base or followers, they really got on my ass because they was like, why are you always responding and arguing to the negative stuff and you don't never talk to us That's people real. that support you? Yeah. And I would have to think about it. I'm like, you are right. I'm giving my energy to all this negative shit and y'all really genuinely support me. And I'm not even saying thank you or nothing. So that right there really got my mind right early uh, you know, and having social media, I was like, nah. So now, if I do respond to negative comment, I troll with them. Like, yeah, I troll bad. She always tell me, like, girl, you always. I talk shit. I troll, but, and, but I, I talk it. to the positive people way mm -hmm. more. I, I definitely do. That's a big move you just said, because a lot of people need to hear that. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? That's a way to deal with it. Like, you do have a lot of people that's positive. I deal with all of them. I ain't gonna lie. Mm -hmm. In comments. I just show love, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. And if you say something crazy, I probably ignore it. You mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? Because there's a lot of good people that support what we do, and, mm -hmm. and we want to give them the energy. Yeah. So you you definitely right about that. Go ahead. I wanted to, because something I read on your um, Instagram, and I was intrigued by your story, <laughs> and how you said that um, you had left... I don't know if that's when you were in L.A. when you um, left L.A. to come back to Houston because of, you know, relationship problems. Baton Rouge. Is it Baton Rouge? Because mm -hmm. um, you had your child in Baton Rouge? Oh, hell no. Where did you have it? In your, Houston. In Houston. <laughs> yeah. Okay, Why did you say hell no like that? My kid was not about to be born in Baton Rouge. What's wrong with Baton Rouge? I went through there a few times just a little bit. Oh, I lived there a long time. Oh, so I what you tripping on? Back. My kid wasn't going to be born there. Why? No. So is that where the dad from? The dad is from Houston or the dad from there? His sperm donor is from Baton Rouge. <laughs> See, that's the part I don't like right I here. don't care. His sperm donor is from Baton Rouge, the BR, and you wouldn't have the baby down there. You know what? You Hence sperm donor, not father. So I'm not going to go there with you. I'll uh, go there with Yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, what happened to make him just a sperm donor? Ask her that for me. <laughs> You know, <laughs> <laughs> no, because um, when I was reading it, I was really touched by, you know, your struggles and the things that you had to go through. I want you to let me know what did you have to go through while you were in Baton Rouge um, that had you lose all, everything mm -hmm. to come back up to Houston? Tell okay, me about it. So when I graduated college, um, I met my best friend. Nard, I don't know if you've seen, you, well, you probably have, that I do all the crazy training stuff right. with. Mm -hmm. And him and I just started going crazy with the training. Mm -hmm. So everything was doing good. That's why I started teaching my classes initially. That's when I started the twerk fits. I was doing this, I was doing that. Everything was going well. I met my sperm donor. Okay. And just in that new relationship, just always together, always doing this. And he was an artist at the time, a rapper. So I'm traveling with him, going to shows with him. So everything that I done saved up and my money, you know, I'm just steady spending. I just living, splurging, doing this, doing that, taking care of whatever, dating this hood niggas. Like, oh, I but don't have a car. But if he was a rapper, he should be making money and also spending money as well. I mean, it sound good, but people like him is really only touching cash. So they not putting nothing up. They buying drugs, mm -hmm. buying jewelry, getting tattoos, doing all this stuff. So it's like you making some stuff, but you're not. So you is, feel he, me? is he a known rapper? He was pretty popular, but he's in jail right now. So okay, um, you you was gonna be like the Beyonce, and he was gonna be Jay, is what you thought when you was really. Going. I wasn't thinking that. I, that's just who I was dating. I wasn't thinking. I mean, about I thought she was just taking it one day at a time. Was, me and my girlfriend, and y'all was just rolling around kicking it. You know what I'm saying? I mean, and he was doing his shit. He was going to shows. You I was supporting him. him. Yes. Yeah. And and so how long they, were y'all together? Like two years. When, when did you know that it wasn't gonna work? Um, I knew before I found out I was pregnant. Damn, but it was too late. Mm. But the baby's a blessing. Oh, so my son is a my son saved me. I'm on now. If I would have never gotten pregnant, I was just so dumb. And oh, he'll change. He'll stop doing this. He'll stop putting his hands on me. He'll stop, you know, X, Y, and Z. He'll stop whatever, whatever. Just kept on chance after chance after chance. But once I, I was trapped first to fucking. All. When did the abuse Let's start? When did the abuse start? Um, because you two years within the two years, 
Okay, you usually start off with mental abuse first and then physical. Mm-hmm. So when did the physical abuse start? Maybe like eight months or mm-hmm. so. And you um, kept making excuses. Mm-hmm. Okay, so it was a typical. Excuses. Okay. Mm-hmm. What built up your courage to? I was pregnant and you That's fought when. me pregnant. And I was like, if you don't care about your seed, you can wow. never care about me. So I had to jump out of a car on the freeway. Wow. While pregnant. Mm-hmm. How far along mm-hmm. were you at that time? It was early. I was probably like two months, two, three months. Did you have to go to the hospital? Um, no. I Did you, in hospital. any of the time that you were with him, were you beaten badly enough where you had to go to the hospital? No, not that bad. Okay. But, but when you dove out the window. No, I opened the door. Yes. <laughs> I opened the door and jumped out of the car. How fast was he going? You know, we was about to get ready to exit, so we was slowing down. Yeah, about you, 30 miles an hour. I, I hate I'm not laughing. I'm laughing about the fact that it can it can go crazy, you know. Mm-hmm. I done been through a lot myself, and uh, but for you to just open that door and jump out, you was tired. You I know was. what I mean? You like, I done I'm had loaded guns out. cocked to what? my head. I done been like like all kind of stuff. I done been in hotel rooms, and my mama done had weird intuitions, and so she done called the hotel like, "Can you go check in this room?" And I had already ran out and left, but it's blood on the hotel walls. What? Like it's it's yeah. Damn. And you this stayed. Is fr- I've never talked about this on no. Uh, we do that to people. And you <laughs> and you stayed. I went back. Like I, I what left made you do that? Back. What? Really? I don't fucking stupid. I don't know. Because Young. he would always call you back and be like, "I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I love you." Mm-hmm. Yeah. And at that time, you felt like you you loved him. Mm-hmm. Wow. Do you feel like because a lot of times you say young and dumb, but do you feel like it's also because you lived a sheltered life that you didn't know a lot? Um, not really. I feel like because I've probably seen um, abuse in my family, and I'm just keep it at that in my family. As much as I probably said like I'll never deal with it, I just built up a tolerance for it. Mm, so That's what you I, saw, believe. I believe. So what, yeah, it does happen a lot, but because mm-hmm. some people when they see abuse, I, they always say, "Oh, that ain't gonna be me." And I see you so always say that I'll never deal with that dumbass shit. Mm, and and I, I was in that dumbass right shit. in that situation. <laughs> wow. Yeah. yeah. But what don't kill you make you stronger. Mm. Oh yeah. So at the end of the day, this was a part of your testimony, and it mm-hmm. pretty much drove you to be who you are today. It and, did. And to be honest, which is a beautiful thing to see you sit here strong. You know what I mean? And in control and understanding mm-hmm. where you're headed. You yeah. know what I mean? You wouldn't be able to do that if you hadn't went through those things. And and. And I know it's not right for no man or, or no woman, period, nobody to be putting their hand on each mm-hmm. other. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? Because, you know, my, my mama shot that gun at my daddy. So, mm-hmm. it ain't, you know, it ain't, it, it, you can get killed playing around, yeah. you know, so somebody could have died. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. So just dope for you to be able to be able to tell your story and not have to go through the situation mm-hmm. any longer, mm-hmm. you know? Mm-hmm. Um, so Hold on, I want to <clears> stick on that for a second. Okay. Um, what you say about, though, because I've, I've heard people talk about relationship problems where, or I've heard of situations where, say, example, the female, because you're used to being in, seeing certain things growing mm. up, right? And a man never used to be that person who used to hit on any woman or so forth. But I've heard of women who, in an argument situation, she'll like, no, you're not leaving the house, you're not leaving the house, and all in his face, and be like, almost like egging him on to, to do that. Mm-hmm. Have you ever heard of situations like that? Or have oh, you ever yeah, known? I've definitely heard of it. Um, what do you think about situations like that? Because then... I see people in the comments of different situations that say, oh, she turned him into that. She made him mm-hmm. become that person. He was never that person before. I mean, I definitely feel like you, if somebody wants to leave, just let them fucking leave. Um, I don't feel like it's right any way it goes to put your hands on the other partner. Um, but people do have to realize everyone's different and everyone has different triggers and everyone has different fuses and just all that so where I may feel like I never touched you da 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 but your verbal could be way more right. way way worse than physical so what you're saying to me might trigger me so bad that I just click Right. so it's like just once you see them first signs or you feel like it's it can go there the temperament gets there let them leave the house or you leave the house or something just. I said just know people's triggers as well because again I've seen where People, I've heard people say, oh, they fight so they can go do the makeup sex. You know, I've heard all of that crazy stuff. And I'm like, why would you want to be in a toxic relationship where you have to go through all of this just to go have crazy passion and, see, and that's love? That's just so ignorant about people. Because me, if we're fighting or arguing, don't touch me. I don't exactly. even want you. Exactly. I'm a, don't touch, you're not gonna be able to touch me for days, like. Right. No, so I don't, that, that shit is sick. That's a mental But illness. you've heard of that too. Yeah, I've heard <laughs> of it. I've heard of it. 
Wow. Definitely. So you say your child saved your life, and mm -hmm. that's the reason why after you jumped out of the car, was that the last time you seen him or spoke to him? Um, so it wasn't the last time. I had, like, I seen him. I didn't see him again until my son was born. Okay. Um, I spoke to him maybe twice, a, a few times, in, maybe twice in between there. Um, I saw him when my son was born. He finally came to the hospital a few days later. So you were texting him and letting him know that, okay, I'm about oh, to deliver? Oh, no, I didn't let him know shit. He ended up calling me the day I was going into labor, oh, which wow. was weird. Right. Yeah, he called me. Actually, it was about a car. It had nothing to do with the baby. Mm. And um, he ended up coming like two, three days later, mm -hmm. and he seen the baby. But my son is seven. He's only seen him like three times. Mm. So, And that was between the age of two days and one year. And has your son ever asked anything else about him or? He makes little comments now getting older. You know, at right. school they have like daddy father, this or right. father that. You know, he makes comments sometimes. But my my son has like a really, really, I have a really great support system from my family, my mom's side, my dad's side, and my stepdad's side. And even just my friends. So, you know, I know it will come up eventually. But right now I don't think he's really lacking or missing much. Mm -hmm. So he doesn't. Did, um, did you know his family? Um, some of them, and the apple don't fall far from the tree. Oh, okay. Cause you know how sometimes like grandmas, even on that she didn't step side in it. Oh, um, I not got into it with this lady. Mm. Crazy. They she didn't step up and do shit. She told me I ain't got no money for you. I ain't I ain't laid out. You I said, bitch, I didn't ask you for no money. I asked you, do you want to see him? Oh, like yeah. Wow, that's wow. that's yeah. <laughs> Well, I guess your sperm don't. Exactly. <laughs> what y'all got going on? I don't know. I'm so lost in See, this. See, I was trying to save it as like, okay, the family making. Oh no, you know. it's strictly sperm on it. That's it. Wow. Wow. Let's get to it, man. Let's so, but hold on. But moving to okay, so moving to oh, she Houston. Get all the tea on you. <laughs> you moved to Houston. Uh -huh. You moved up here with a thousand dollars. You said right, mm -hmm. and you moved in with your sister. Well, my sister and her partner at the time were getting an apartment, mm -hmm. and then they kind of had their issues and changed their mind. So I was like, well, I'll just move in. I'm about to have a baby. <laughs> I was like, I don't know how I'm baby this shit, but right. I'll make it happen. So when I was pregnant, I worked four jobs. Mm. I was a personal trainer. I was a waitress. I bartended, and I um, worked at Babies R Us because I wanted discounts on all the baby stuff. Which is smart. Mm -hmm. Okay. And then how many times during all this time you broke down crying because you didn't know? All the time. I used to always break down crying. I used to pass out. I used to all kind of shit. Mm. Were you eating? Uh, when I could. I mean, you know, that first trimester, I didn't eat a lot. But I actually, at the beginning of my pregnancy, I lost like 12 pounds. Wow. So I just was small. So your baby is what helped you kept pushing because mm -hmm. you know that yep. it's a purpose. He has mm -hmm. a purpose. And still to now, that's he is the reason for everything. Like, he deserves everything, so he's going to have everything. Wow. So at what point did you say, I'm going to get a studio? Um, I was. It was always kind of on my mind, but I was scared. Like, that's a huge commitment. It is. And then um, I was training. When I had my son, a guy came to me at one of the bars I was working at, and, um, you know, we just talked to some of personal trainer. I told him, you know, I'm looking for a spot. Because when I was going to, like, the L.A. Fitness and the Planet Fitness and all this and that, you know, they want you to have this certificate, this, 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 and this. And then they charge people to come in and train hundreds a month. Mm -hmm. And then the trainer only gets like 20 an hour. Yeah. It's like, hell mm -mm. no. Mm -mm. I'm not doing that. So um, I started training at this guy's gym and clientele was crazy. Like, mm -hmm. boom. And I, as soon as I got released from my doctor, six weeks, me and my newborn was in the gym every single day. And then it was like five minutes from my mama's house. I was like, this is perfect. And so we were just going crazy in there. And then I just started losing all my clientele. And I'm like, what Why? the hell is going on? The guy who Jim I was working at was hitting all my clients, DMing my clients, making sexual advances at my clients. Uh, he started, and they, they didn't come and tell you? I started seeing like, I would go to change the music on his phone or do something. His he DMs would be open. I would see him DMing them. Or mm. Then my close friends started telling me things. And I was like... Then it just was like, it was a man space, so it just was like dirty, and then in the office, I'm trying to do consultations. First of all, it's a man space and it's dirty. You're going to have to back that up. Every man space ain't dirty. <laughs> no, not So every, let me just pull you up on that. Lot. I got to check that for the men okay. that be doing it right. So you apologize. Shout out to y'all. There you go. But I got it, y'all. It was one of them, it was <laughs> one of them dirty ones. <laughs> go in the office, and it's like, 
McDonald's bags, Taco Bell. I'm like, okay, you can eat what you want. But this is still a gym. Clean Put the up. shit up. We have to right. bring people in here. And then I just, it was like, I started seeing sexual stuff. And I'm like, you know what? I got to I gotta go. Mm. So I was like, fuck it. I'm and like, then you call all your clientele back. and So you went and found your spot after that? Mm-hmm. And I was just still working there, but I was finding a spot. Right. So one day I just texted him, like, this is going to be my last week. He was like, huh? And you had your money saved up. Mm-hmm. Was it expensive? Yeah, it was. And I've had to move like three times. It's been pretty expensive. So you're renting a spot every time you go? Yeah, for now. For now. For but now. Your goal to is to buy perfect, your own mm-hmm. location. Mm-hmm. Okay. Houston is hard, but I want to buy a house and see where I'm going to be and get settled and where my son's going to be going to school and do all that first mm-hmm. before I buy a business. Houston's huge. Mm-hmm. I would hate to have bought something where I used to live and then now where I'm at now, I would hate having to commute like that every day. And when you got your first spot or your, yeah, your first spot, what happened where it brought all your clientele in? What made you grow I, your clientele? My social media just does it for me. Mm. I just... I always post what I'm doing. I post the videos. I post my clients. I post my training. I post my, I feel like, um, women like to work out with me one because I have so many women like, yeah, I was at this male trainer. And then I'm like, "Mm -hmm, you thought you wanted to be over there. Then you just start losing all this weight and you're like, your body ain't doing what you want. And then all these other guys hitting on you, you're not comfortable in the gym. And so they always come to me like, I want to look, I want to be fine and I want a small waist, but I want to keep my ass. And guys tell me, the guy trainers tell me that's not possible. I'll be like, oh, okay. I guess I'm not like walking proof. But they that. always <laughs> say that everybody's body is different. So mm-hmm. a girl can come to you and she's like this. And I've seen on social media where they be like, they all of a sudden they have a big booty, small waistline. Mm-hmm. And it's like, oh, this is all natural. But they were like this, flat, nothing. It's I'm possible. Like, you can grow everything. It's muscles. Mm. Your your butt is a muscle. Your glutes are a muscle. You can grow them. Absolutely. Because I've met some other girls who, you know, I'm not going to call no names, who was like that. And, you know, now they'll they go on social media. Lie. They'll go on social media and lie and say it's all natural. They, but then off camera, they'll tell me, oh, no, I had to buy this. That's another reason why I feel like a lot of women like me and come to me or like follow me is because they know I'm natural. I post my body at all stages. Like I might have a six pack this month. I might not this month. I might like, I could be real tone one month. I could have cellulite the next, like I'm super natural. I have nothing done like on my body. So I think a lot of women really, cause right now it's like everybody's coming out. Cause there was a few trainers I used to follow and used to look up to like, Oh my gosh, she looks so good. Then I found out their body was fake. I was like, mm-hmm. like mm-hmm. I support if you got your body done, you do need to work out and keep it up. Support it. Be honest. Be honest. So these girls come bringing me pictures like, I want to look like this. I'm like, she don't look like that. Right. The doctor did that. Mm -hmm. So I think that's, uh, I think that's probably one of the biggest things that just even got me where I'm at with the personal training and the fitness. You started doing that twerk fitness. What year? Like 2015. Who started that? Because the twerk fitness. Let me tell you what I did because I wasn't seeing it. Cause I still I'm don't t- see it. So you feel like you started the twerk fitness? Shout out to Soldier Boy. I did it first. <laughs> <laughs> Cause I'm curious. Cause I know I started seeing a lot of people on social media start doing this twerk fitness, and I'm mm-hmm. like, when did this start up? Mm-hmm. It's it's a great workout because mm-hmm. you gotta work. But then not everybody know how to twerk. Not everybody knows how to twerk, and not every- my class is twerk fit for a reason. We're not just in there shaking ass. You're still working out. We're still going to sweat. Your thighs are still going to burn. You're still, it's not just the little clips I post on social media. They're fun. And, you know, I, the twerking is what draws the most attention. But if you watch the full videos and the recaps, it's not just ass mm. shaking. We are still working out. Do you have men join or is it only females? I've had men in class and I've also done guest appearances in other people's classes. So when I do that, I can modify to where you like add the twerking or there's no twerking. Yeah, because some so men I can modify are, all my right. routine. Because some men mm-hmm. are like, oh, only gay guys going to want to be twerking. If I'm mm-hmm. straight, they're like, oh, no, I can't be caught yeah, dead so twerking. My twerk That's true. Classes, yeah. That's true. My twerk fit classes, I don't have straight men sign up, no, like okay. I'm promoting it. But if I go do a guest class, like a pop up in somebody else's class, I can modify it. I'll be okay. like, okay, you know, if you're a twerker, you can do this. If you're not, because even some women don't want to twerk. Okay. So I know how to switch it up. Okay, that's cool. 
Yeah, I already know. You're going to have to switch it up. I ain't no nigga doing no real nigga twerking out here. So you can go on with that. Please don't. Uh, I don't want to see it. <laughs> yeah, I ain't no real nigga twerking out here. Let me get in Wait, here. Hold on, you one more finally thing. let me talk to this okay. woman or you going to deal with this? You can come in on this I'm topic. tripping off this interview. You said you was going to have me there. Yeah, do. but I ain't going to do it. I changed my damn mind. No, but, right um, in the middle of it. Were you happy when Megan and Glorilla did their twerk oh challenge? Oh, my God. So look. Whenever she posted they, you when they and posted I was like, the challenge, I just kept watching, kept watching. And I was just like, do I want to do this? Like, I don't know. Because sometimes it's just like, like we talking about the social media and the comments and mm-hmm. this and that. Sometimes it's just like, I don't even feel like hearing all the, oh, that's all you do. And it's like, I was like, whatever. I'm going to just let them have it. But in my head, I was thinking about it. I'm like, I kind of want to. And then um, my girlfriend actually texted me. She was like, babe, I think you should do the challenge. I say, that was literally just on my mind. I was like, all right. So I posted on Instagram. I'm like, should I do the challenge? And I tagged Megan. And she was like, well, um, mm-hmm. I said, tomorrow, you going to have it. So then I posted so it. So you already knew her? Well, I've never met her in person, okay. but I've talked to her on social media before. Mm-hmm. And this, like, before she really just blew up. Went, yeah. Right. And she had uh, met, commented to me about training before. Mm-hmm. But then it was like right after that, like, she, blew up she went quick. crazy. She so dope she was, as hell. Yeah. So she knew who you were and knew what you did. Yeah. But she doesn't follow me or anything. Okay. So, But she got the notification, I guess, because we've been before. Mm-hmm. And then, um, yeah, so I did it the next day, and she posted me on her story. And I was happy with that. Like, I had got a lot of Amen. followers, a lot of attention. I was cool. And then the next day, we were on our way to Orange County. I had a, um, to go meet with Ethica. And when I landed, my phone just like, you know when your phone goes so crazy? It's like... It starts like freezing and stuff. Like mm-hmm. it's like all the. So what the fuck? So I check my messages because my Instagram that don't come to my phone. That's too much. Mm-hmm. And um, people's like making this and making that, and you're on a plane. You don't even see the shit. I'm like, what are y'all talking about? And she got on Instagram for me because I was saying it out loud. And she was like, what the fuck? And I was like, wow. And like, she posted. I didn't even know what to do. I'm trying to. Learn. I'm trying to get my luggage. I'm trying to look at this. Then I got overwhelmed. Then like I said, I was on my way for uh, to go meet with Ethica Music. So I just was. I was so overwhelmed. Wow, wow. that dope. was dope. I mean, yeah, you deserve it. You've been practicing forever. You know, she is. So why not? Why men. not? Why not put it out there? And you good at it too. Thank you. You did your thing, but man. a lot of men would always tell their girls or be like, "You better not," because this challenge went so crazy where I, I saw people posting that, and talking about, "You better not." I better not catch you. I posted you that on Twitter. I said, "Your that. partner, you better not shake your ass uh, to that song." I said, "Mine, but you should do the challenge." But this just goes so you have to know who you're dating. Mm, and you have, right. But I did mine true to me. I wasn't in a thong, like, not saying I've never been in a thong shaking my ass, but I wasn't in a thong just twerking, just whatever. Mine was with the purpose, and it made my classes go crazy. And when when Megan posted, she said, Glow, let's go take Kayla's class. Yeah, I said. saw that. Yep. So mine made sense, and it promoted my business. Mm-hmm. Yours was good. I ain't going to trip. You know, I seen it. You know what I'm saying? Um, between you and Lotto, you know, it was a tough choice. <laughs> I love Lotto, so I'm just I'll saying, take I'm that. Just saying. I love me some Lotto, so I'll I mean, take I that. watched it. You know, I didn't want to watch it, but it's in the media. <laughs> I watched it because it's my job to watch it. I understand. And, um, I watched it. and uh, Who did you think go better? Well, you know, it was close. It was close. But, um, you know, I'll, I'll plead the fifth on that. You know what I mean? I'm not for the play that game with you in here. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> but definitely love the movement, man, just the culture, bro. Um, everybody knows that. You know, it's something we got to do. But I got to ask you a question. Like, is it Chris Brown or Cravo? Which one is it? I haven't listened to none of that shit. I just shit. said what I said. Just I man. ain't listened to none of that so shit. neither one of them niggas, both of y'all them fell off and y'all trying to get back on, so she ain't going to give y'all no time. Somebody must be trying to drop an album or something. Something going on. Yeah. That's what so. I said. <laughs> do you think that they, a lot of propaganda, do you think these people are staging all this stuff because they know that this stuff draws people's attention? I think so. Yeah. It always happens around either tour time or album dropping yeah. time. Shout out to uh, uh, Blueface and uh, what's that girl name? Krishana. They had figured it out. You know what I'm saying? Man. That's crazy. <laughs> It's been real quiet since yeah. he been it's in been jail. Quiet. Exactly. It's been quiet. So exactly. he was driving it. Maybe he was driving. He it. said, "Welcome to Blue Circus." Lord have mercy. <laughs> but I could never understand with their relationship the fact that because even whenever right before he went, she was like try to get a a free break from him and oh I'm good now and da 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 and as soon as he is like she's going I'm like why go back to all of that abuse? Crazy. Because the fame, the fame and the money. But she already have a name now where she can go over here and do her own thing. 
Ah, uh, in her head, I guess he made her her. So she wants to stick, keep on. I don't know. That's what I can assume. Let me um, let me get in here. In his bag. Mm-hmm. You did that a few months ago. Like, yeah. let's talk about the music a little bit. Like, okay. what did what what inspired that? I mean, you know, what? Let's talk about it. I was just in the car listening to beats on my way to the studio, and I just was like, "Bitch, stop all that talk." I said, "Oh yeah, I like that." <laughs> it just. <laughs> I talk a lot of shit. I feel like I can really do that in my music. Yeah. I love to talk, like, if you listen to any and all of my music. Besides, I do fitness music as well for my classes. But the ratchet music is all going to always be talking shit. How was the video doing and everything? You seem like you were having fun. Oh, yeah, I had fun. Like, I really put together all my videos, get together my outfits, my sets, my girls. my. So I really do majority of everything myself so i enjoy it did you choose a videographer that you always use or Mm -hmm. just a different one no i normally use the same videographer somebody i've been going to school with since the fifth grade wow so very comfortable are you gonna shout the nigga out or not damn (laughs) shout out to you shot by drizzy good lord (laughs) jesus Uh, but I, I just like to shout people out because they, you know, they. Nah, D, that's my my dog. Like I said, we've been friends for like ten years old. So that's hard. He does almost all of my videos unless he's just not available or, or you know we're in a different city at the time. But he does all my stuff and he's fire. He's wow. he's cold with it. What do you want to go into music? I mean, you definitely have killed the you know the stretches and the twerking and the. You know, what do you want to take the music to? Um. Like I said, I do both sides of the music. So the fitness music is just, it's just like a double whammy. Like I have a class tonight out here in Dallas and Dope. I can do my whole class to my own music. That's what That's I would say. So you always you do your, your own music all now, the time. Now, I throw in a few it. songs I like. Like I'll probably throw in Megan Glow's song. Of course. And, you know, a few songs. But overall, it's like I'll do mine. And again, the way I teach my routines are it's, fitness and twerking so i have girls tell me girl i did this all week and i could tell i done lost mm. some weight because it's still a workout but guess what you have to stream my music to do it wow yeah the young that makes blue, sense the young blue love scar tour was like what uh how was that for you that was super exciting so i did blue before the gates one yeah you so, did so um and i did dallas first yeah i did out here first mm-hmm. it was super exciting and just to go on stage and like people knew who I was, nice. you know, that's and nice. whether it was just, um, you know, that's that fitness girl. Y'all still knew who I was. Mm. Yeah. And it's crazy. And I had a really, really, really big, like positive feedback from it. And then my girlfriend DJ for me and she's from here. So shout out, shout out to your girlfriend. DJ who you won't say her name. I'm the, oh this God. nigga right here. Oh my, it's all about the twerk thing. <laughs> what is her name? DJ Ari. Shout out to DJ. Ari the Ari. DJ. Ari the DJ. <laughs> Um, but she, yeah, she copped out. She's not in Dallas no more, so we, you know, whatever. <laughs> Let's keep moving. Fast forward. Let's go. Uh, what about WNBA? What, it seemed like a lot of colors. Seemed a lot of, like a lot of fun. Mm-hmm. What, what was that all about? Well, my bitches at? Yeah. So we was just in the studio. I was in the studio with one of my homegirls. This was when I first, first started doing music. So the beat came on, and she just was like, she just started saying it. She's like, oh, you should say this. And so we just built off of that. It was super fun. That one, that seemed was like really... It. And that video, I, I enjoyed putting that video together. That one was really fun. And I think I kind of slept on it for a while. So now it's like I keep hearing it and listening to it. I'm like, this all really hard. I need to <laughs> yeah, push need to it right. Let's yeah, get behind this all, And the video was fire. So I need to really. Have was that your favorite one that you've done? Um, That's definitely my favorite video. Video. Mm-hmm. What was your favorite song? I think between In His Bag that are out that's out that's between out. in his bag and one of my bitches probably my favorite wow. ratchet songs um but the cash i man. like i like it i do like that one and the, it, the video did well too i put that video together as yeah, well i liked it but, I, I watched it but um i think i like the other two better but yeah. i mean that one's still up there and in fitness i like twerk out part two but everybody yeah, else like it. twerk out part, part one. one it's Why? going crazy on tiktok why they like twerk up part one TikTok over two? It's going crazy. TikTok is I don't know. That one was out first. That's the first song I ever dropped. So, so to me in my head, it. it was like, Ugh. like it's the first song I ever did, you know. But I do like the video for it. And like I said, the challenge was going crazy. So I make up challenges like again to all my fitness songs. And mm-hmm. that one picked up. And do you think twerking well. is going anywhere? No. <laughs> Absolutely uh, not. Uh, before they was twerking, they were popping that coochie another way. 
Big Z. Right. Yeah, it'll switch up. The name will switch up, but the game will remain the same. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Niggas, these <laughs> women going to get out. <laughs> yeah. They going to pop it every time. You ain't got to worry about that. At they ain't all. going nowhere. It, you know what I mean? But they going to change the name. They're going to call it something else. It don't matter. It's different. Still, That's it's what still I mean. Gonna go. It's not going to go away. I mean, it's, at the end of the day, you always, it's always going to be some, some yeah. booty shaking. Yeah. Even though she going to be 70, shaking that <laughs> thing. Yeah. I just might. Hey, so how how is how's your TikTok? Like how how is how is the numbers on the TikTok platform? So I have one point one million followers on TikTok. Okay. And um my stuff does well. Like I sold out a whole fitness tour one summer in numerous cities that I have never even stepped foot in solely off one TikTok video. It went mm. viral, got like twenty four million views. Wow. And that's another thing that made me start doing my own music. Cause As you should. I start bringing the artists whose songs are going viral to my class. So I would have them perform while I'm doing the thing. And they're like, man, you brought my song back. And, um, for example, the, what's it, T-Cash Spread Your Legs? Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. All that routine shout I did. Shout out T-Cash. Yeah, shout out to him. He pulled up to my uh, class. That one went crazy. And so that one went 24 million views on TikTok. Wow. And so I, um, I don't know if I reached out to him, he reached out to me. I'm like, I actually have a class in Dallas coming up, like pull up. So we did it. I had video class was full, like 40, 50 girls. Wow. Um, wow. You know, and he was in there. He performed while I did it. And then really what made me do my first song was that same routine. A girl in Atlanta, if I knew her name, I say it, but I don't. <laughs> You know, why, wait a minute. <laughs> the, you see the look? look I ain't did nothing yet. You know how I go off. So you, a girl in Atlanta took my routine, taught it in her class, recorded it, and posted it, and went more viral than me. Wow. And didn't credit me or nothing. What did you do? I was pissed off. So I'm hard. looking up how did to you train do like this right. and do that. You, it's nothing you can do for no, dance. No, not for or dance. fitness or move. Like but did you hit her up and be like, say no, nothing? Ain't no, ain't no use. I, I think I was blocked. I think I ended up blocked. Yeah, yeah, because you were. I think I got blocked. Yeah. And so I was like, you know what? Took, Fuck it. If they ain't going to give me credit, yep. they, I'm going to get streamed. Took, mm. yeah. so that's, what took, they did. that's why you got to keep Indeed. changing it to make it more unique because they got to keep up with you. Oh, no, if because you keep people changing. was going crazy in the comments, though, tagging like Kayla did this, Kayla made this. Right. Okay. So that's why I got blocked because I didn't say nothing. Yeah, uh, blocked. Yeah, would have got the same you, thing. But if you didn't like say nothing, why block you? They going to keep saying whatever anyway. crazy. You know, wow. So, do you feel? Do you? Would you like to work with Megan or Glorilla doing a song? Hell yeah, a song. Y'all want to come to class? Y'all want anything? Absolutely. They right in my alley. I love that ratchet shit. So yeah. Uh, let's talk about the movie. Let's talk about the movie you was in with Lil Kiki and mm -hmm. uh, my boy Slim Thug and uh, yeah, uh, propane, propane mm -hmm. over everything. You know what that? Buy digger propane. How did you get to be in that? Um, so actually I was contacted about the movie and it just was like a lot of back and forth between like my like represent representation at the time and them and oh it, it would just be last minute stuff like can you come pull up today and do a reading and can you mm. um, and it was a uh, the person I actually contacted was someone that I've done a movie for before okay so a, a direct a film director and so I'm like he's like I told them you know you're good da -da, but can you I'm like, I have a life. You can't just hit me up at six and say, can you come at seven? Like, right. I work, I have a kid, no. And to me, it's just, if you aren't professional enough at this, that time, like, I'm not gonna stress myself about it. Like, as much as I'd love to see what we can figure out, I'm not doing it. And so that probably went on for a few weeks. And then I had just went out one day, one of my friends, like, I'm coming to get you. I wasn't even going. And I had walked by and Slim Thug and some of his friends were at the table. And Slim was like, hey, Kayla. And I, we spoke or whatever. And so his homeboy was like, this Kayla? I'm like, yeah. He was like, so you don't want to do our movie? I said, so y'all don't know how to be professional? <laughs> That's what I'm talking about. And then about it just smash. went from there. And so he hit me. He was like, okay, can we meet this day, this time? I was like, that's how you do it. So we mm. met like two You're days You're not later. checking me like that. Yo, you <laughs> think you're going to just check it right. Your little ass think you cute. You're, that ain't going to work. I'm like, hell no. Nah, don't pick somebody. I'd rather take the other. Look, you got two more girls. <laughs> Thank no, you. I'm just kidding. Good. No, I get it. I get it. <laughs> yeah, you do have to be professional, but... You know, nigga be on nigga time. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> they do. <laughs> they be trying to figure it out. But, you know, even though the movie happened and mm -hmm. everything was okay, Yeah, right? we worked everything out. So how did you like the set and everything? And you how enjoyed did, how yourself? did you like the flow of everything? I did. I enjoyed myself well. I um I had been on Slim Thug, but that was my first time really being around Propane and Kiki really? and all them. They they cool. They really cool. Yeah. yeah, them boys really, really cool. Them the homies right we there. We had fun. Yeah, we, we had fun. It was a lot of days on set, different places, locations. Um, We had a lot of fun. The 
the movie premiere was good. I what's think the name of the movie now? Y- y'all didn't mention the name. What's the name of the movie? <laughs> Double Cup. So oh, okay. it's, yeah, it's not out That'll yet. Like cool. we did the. I when knew it, it didn't come out because they had to go revamp it. Yeah. And so they keep saying soon. Okay. So it's not out yet, but they it's are coming. right now planning for media press and the yeah. press run and yeah. all that. Yeah. It's so. uh, it's just coming because Propane hit me up and. Uh, he was telling me Slim them they was gonna come up so yeah, they had I can to do feel a lot. they, they had a lot of then they shifted and, back I thought mm-hmm. the niggas really had slid me like oh these niggas did and they didn't even let me know so mm-hmm. you just confirmed that they didn't really you know just yeah once we did the place. premiere it was like a lot of critiques that they you know had when to when take. was the premiere it was when when was it it was like what November I wanna say okay. it was so cold outside yeah that was the time okay. it was like I was November mm-hmm. that was about the time and you had a main role yeah I have a main role who do you play of course I play, I was Kiki's girlfriend, mm-hmm. but you know, he was in jail and all kind of stuff. And then he, when he got out, he had, y'all see, he had just did some shit and then I ended up with Slim <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, yes, yeah. uh, 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 what Sugar Daddy Slim. <laughs> <laughs> no, nah, man, it's just dope to see you working and out here really figuring it out and, and, and being that social media presence, that branding. I mean, you had an OnlyFans too. Is you stretching on there, or, or can we see some exclusive content on there? You gotta go subscribe. <laughs> <laughs> what made you do an OnlyFans? <laughs> because I just feel like when you're young and you know you first get on social media and you know you're posting certain things or you're you're doing photo shoots and thongs and you're doing this and you're doing that and it's like okay it's cool at first and then it gets to a point it's like I'm not gonna keep posting this shit on the internet so you get enough of me like right on the internet you're gonna see what you see on here and if you wanna see something else you can go on there I'm not gonna keep posting all that on my page mm. wow cause I remember when OnlyFans came out it's like people would always like they felt like you were doing a lot more than just showing certain things. Everybody on OnlyFans was doing a lot more. She so, not finna tell you what the secret is to her sauce. I'm not gonna talk about you know mine, what I'm but she got, she no, got a my, secret sauce. <laughs> my son you know brought up OnlyFans the other day. He seen it on YouTube. What? Yeah, my son, my son seen it on YouTube. Get that phone YouTube. out of his hand. No, he, yeah, he ain't been on his phone. <laughs> but, um, he did, and he was like, OnlyFans. I was like, what you know about that? Like, what what you think it is? And he was like, it's for girls. So I had to explain to him, like, that's not what OnlyFans is. People made that, you know, image in their head of what mm-hmm. it is, but OnlyFans is for your fans. So if y'all was to say y'all wanted to put boss talk on OnlyFans. I'm not, not. I'm not going to be out here popping and, and letting the world see you? it. <laughs> If no, you decided you happened. wanted to it put happened. these shows on OnlyFans right. for people to pay to have to watch them, that's just where they would have to go pay to watch them. Okay. It's that's so always, it's always have to be something it's whatever sexual, so you, to Whatever say. you do. If if Ari decided she wants to put together DJ Music. mixes or mm-hmm. teach people how to DJ or certain transitions, she could go sell it on there. It's only about what you do, your fans. Yeah, because they make it sound right. like it's, it's all about girl. sex. What's her name? It's not, they made all that yeah, money it's not. On People do cooking recipes the one, on there. Yeah. Really? Leave me outside. How about that? Bang, baby. What's yeah, her name? Yeah. That's the one right there. Yeah, yeah, she, she killed she, it. Mm-hmm. So it's certain ones that get on there and it make crazy sense. So yeah, at the end of the day, I, I agree with you. Um, even though we're going to go to app style, I'm not going to go with the only <laughs> fan. We're going to get a private app. I'm not for the food with this girl, Kayla. I'm not telling you to go. No, but I, you know, I. Top three artists of all time, dead or alive, any genre. Top three artists of all time. Of all time? Yeah, this is your top three. Of all time. All time. Man. Top three of all time, dead or alive. Rod Wave is in my top. Rod Wave? I love him. And I don't have favorites. Can we just do something crazy? I don't have a lot of favorites. That nigga did something crazy. Really? I don't have favorites in nothing. That nigga did something crazy. Category? I I don't have favorites. You have favorite restaurants? No, I don't. I don't have favorites. She. I I don't have favorites. I think Rod Wave stole somebody's song or something. I don't give a damn. He did it better. That nigga did something. He did it better. That nigga did something. I'll be thinking. That nigga did something. Yeah, that nigga did something. Him and Boosie was. What's going at it? What's the number two? Number two. Uh, she be hating on BR. Niggas steal songs from BR. Taking, you know, I'm not doing it. Let's keep going. Uh, number two. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? We're going to put Rod Wave number two. I'm myself. I'm my own number one. Fuck That's beautiful. That. Okay. That's beautiful. I am my own number one. That's what Kid Kid said last yeah. night. Uh, yeah, he from Louisiana too. We don't. Let's keep, going, let's keep going. Let's keep going. No, all this kid kid. We interviewed a guy. Oh, like she her. don't know him. She, she didn't know Ben Rouge. 
<laughs> number three, <laughs> number <laughs> three. <laughs> Gee, who I don't Lil Webby Lil Webby <laughs> of all time any genre I know I'm just thinking like I don't have favorites like as crazy as it sounds I don't have Bro, favorites give it stuff. up give it up I don't give it up but like if you if, if you was to be like what's your playlist gonna be right like if you turn your phone on right now only thing you probably gonna hear is Rod Wave Megan Young Boy Megan like, should be one because she she posting your ass. These other niggas ain't doing nothing. Make Megan the one. Right. I, I wouldn't make now another nigga one. Mm -hmm. It'd be Megan. She posted you. Mm -hmm. uh, damn these other folks. They ain't posting nothing. Well, if we're going to talk about favorites like that, yeah, Megan, it's Megan is posting me. Yeah. Blue is posting me. Gates Blue. is posting yeah, me. There you go. But that's, all them, that's all the yeah. music that plays in my stuff. That's all. Megan, Gates, Blue. All of them. Uh, a, 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 a lot of people always go with your Tupac, your Michael Jackson. No, she's young. She young. The girl ain't but 22. No, I'm not. Oh, they, oh, well, I ain't going to go there because they be lying <laughs> on the internet to stay relevant. They don't go there. I'm 32. Oh, sh well, she told it. Damn. I don't give a fuck. <laughs> <laughs> I look good. <laughs> no, you look, you look age. great. I, I, I really thought you was younger, but at the end of the day, um, you know, love your choices. Um, Want to see you win. Thank you for coming on the show. How can people get a hold of you if they're trying to reach out? So Instagram, all social media is Kayla G underscore YouTube, Kayla G 713. Kayla G is going to pop up there. What, did you, 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 what side of town you say just stay on? North side. North side. She thinks she hard. Cause she I, went to the same high school. <laughs> I went to the same high school, Slim Thug and everything. I already know. We all went all to. Y'all think y'all hard because uh, y'all from the North Lane, side. All of us was the same high school. Fast Lane was just on here. Yeah, 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 yeah. He too cool too. to do interviews. That nigga cool right there. He, <laughs> nigga wasn't set up for nothing. Do you hear me? <laughs> <laughs> Lil Lou. Hey, man. But no, nah, that's dope, man. And, and, and so, uh, out of Houston, what do you think about these restaurants in Houston are popping, right? They be, mm -hmm. I be going around like, damn, they food. Niggas standing, Trill Burger, all these different places. Man. I've never been there. Uh, but still, it's a bunch of them. Yeah. Turkey Leg Hut. We can keep going. They just stand outside. Mm -hmm. They love the food in Houston. And you be teaching I feel exercise. Like it's just you know <laughs> <laughs> yeah, go eat over here and then come work it out. Let me tell you, I don't tell people. Don't worry about what I eat. I yeah. got my body in a point where I like myself. If I, I can eat this and be okay with how I look after, I can shake myself back. I'm not going to tell my clients you can go do, you can't do what you want right now. Yeah. Get yourself right. So I'm re that's I'm really honest to my clients and everybody I and about myself, period. So Are you like a drill do you, sergeant do you, do you with your clients? What more my clients call me? Yeah, okay. <laughs> so do you sneak? You, you sneak? You sneak to restaurants and hide and shit with shades on to your own nigga. Hell no! I don't. Y'all <laughs> just I don't sneak nowhere. Listen, that's all she's I like, be yeah. out in the open. I'm so just. And you can eat a lot. I ain't gonna say I eat a lot, but I eat what I want. I do. She peckish. She bird bit. Just a little bit. She ain't eat nothing. Yeah. Anyway. I have one more question. What? I'm going to shut this hole down. <laughs> I had a one more question. It's I'm going to ask this. So, um, your girlfriend, y'all in a relationship, right? Yeah. Okay. So, and this question is something that I'm crazy. I ask crazy stuff. Okay. okay? All right. Me growing up, when I saw, when I would see a couple females, right? Because mm -hmm. I'm trying to understand this, right? So, you have a fam and you have a what? I mean, it's all different. It's all different. Yeah, all okay. relationships are different. Okay. Correct me if I'm wrong in any terms I say, okay? Okay. Okay, so you have your stud. Okay. Okay. And then, so now, usually if y'all want to have kids, it's always usually to me, when I was younger and, you know, this stuff started just started kicking it off, it'd be the female who is having the kids, mm -hmm. not the stud. Mm -hmm. But now, recently in the past, ever since the brat did it to me, I'm seeing, what, young M.A.? Now it's pregnant. I'm like, what? for real? Yeah, she's seven months pregnant. What y'all hating for? So I'm like, <laughs> so I'm like, I'm seeing more. I'm seeing more studs getting pregnant and not the female in the relationship. Shout out who is to Young M A. So I'm like, is this a, a trend? Is this, you know, what is this? I think that um, I support it. I mean, you're still a woman at the end of the day, right. regardless of how you dress. So I feel like if it just took a celebrity for a lot of people to get comfortable doing it, because. Um, it just is so much judgment. It's like, oh, you want to dress like a boy, but you want to have a baby. Like, all women don't dress like a man just because they want to be a man. They're just mm -hmm. comfortable in that type of clothing or that's just their the image that they like. It's not necessarily, I want to be a man. So 
they should still but very much be able to have. They do have some. Who be do. like, you know, taking all those. But they're not the ones you finna see pregnant. Right, that's what I'm saying. They're not the ones you gonna see pregnant. <laughs> so, most of the time, I, I've seen some. Cause they be doing all the Shout gender. Shout out to the niggas who be minding their business. Cause, cause, okay, cause even even with that, cause they're, some, of, some of them be trying to, you know, take all the pills and trying to do, you know, gender, what, I don't even know what to call it. But, okay, so I saw an article where you had a high school kid who was, um, uh, who was going through the transition and everything like that, but he's also running with females. Mm-hmm. But you know, a guy's faster than a woman anyway. Mm-hmm. So is that fair to have this person, a transgender fair. I don't believe that's kid, fair, personally. You know what I mean? Running with females. I don't, I don't personally believe that's okay, fair. Okay, I just wanted to know because a lot of people on the comments was like, no, they shouldn't make that happen. Da, da, da. It's not fair because they have an mm-hmm. upper hand. Well, like you say, you know, when you know you used to see it in versus now like i've been dating girls for a really really long time so and again i'm the, like you said minding your business i'm the epitome of minding my damn business so it's do your thing live your life have fun but to me i'll be like i might not be gay enough these days like i'm just used to <laughs> this and this and this and that's it now you know there's so much other stuff and right. different things live your life have fun support yourself I'm going to just do what's comfortable for me and everybody can just <laughs> live their life. Right. Okay. Wow, man, I tell you, man, that's one of the things I say, man. Just make sure you get your life right with God. Make sure you pray for your family. Make sure you lead and direct the people that's around you in the right direction as y'all evolve mm-hmm. because it's all the evolution. Mm-hmm. Everybody that's where they're at right now won't be there 10, 20 mm-hmm. years from now. We don't know where they're going to be, even if they'll be living. I'm one of the coldest dudes when it comes down to respecting people in their space. You feel me? So at the end of the day, respect me and respect mine, man. It's going down. Boss Talk 101, what a boss's talk, man. Make sure you guys get in these clips. Watch the next clips. It's going to be stupid, Gayla. Damn, Kayla G. Damn. <laughs> Kayla G. Kayla G. Not Gayla G, but Kayla G. Well, she is gay, but hey. You know. <laughs> Kayla G is going to definitely go hard in this next clip coming up right after this. Do not miss this next clip. Um, Go ahead. Hey, check it, man. It's been another great segment. We love you. I love y'all, too. It's been another great segment of Boss Talk 101, where the bosses talk. 